Number 60, an elevated level of an enzyme alkaline phosphatase, which is ALP, in human serum is an indication of possible liver or bone disorder. The level of serum ALP is so low that it is very difficult to measure directly. However, ALP catalyzes a number of reactions and its relative concentration can be determined by measuring the rate of one of these reactions under controlled conditions. One such reaction is the conversion of P-nitrophenyl phosphate, which is PNPP, to P-nitrophenoxide ion, which is PNP, nanophosphate ion. Control of temperature during the test is very important. The rate of the reaction increases 1.47 times if the temperature changes from 30 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius. What is the activation energy for the ALP catalyzed conversion of PNPP to PNP and phosphate? Okay, a lot of talk in here, but the only thing that really comes down to it is what numbers did they give me, right? They did say that the rate of this reaction increases from 1.47 uh, 1 times if we're changing those temperatures. And at the end of the day, they want to know what the activation energy is. Now just know that an activation energy is always a EA value. And if you're trying to solve for a EA value an activation energy, and they give you two temperatures, chances are you're gonna be using one formula. And that formula is this one right here. It's the ln K1 over K2 equals EA over R, one over T2 minus one over T1. Now this is basically just a fancy linear equation of y equals mx plus b, right? Um, but just plugging in for your two points, k1 and k2, t1 and t2. Now they did tell me that there is going to be a temperature change. So I guess we'll start there. Now it doesn't really matter which one you label as t2, which one you label as t1. But I guess intuitively, right? If we're going from 30 to 37, this 30 degrees should be a T1 value and this 37 should be a T2 value. So let's just write those in. The T1 value is 30 degrees Celsius and the T2 value is 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now let's, I guess let's just keep working backwards, right? So we got this part figured out. We want to find out the EA, the activation energy, so that's gonna be X. The R value is always that constant number that we've probably seen from time to time. This R value is the one that is linking with energy, and that R value is the 8.314. So we'll say R equals 8.314, and that's joules per mole times Kelvin. But uh-oh, one of the units of R is Kelvin. That means that your temp values, what unit do they have to be in? Yeah, you got it. They have to be in Kelvin. So the first thing is, I'm going to just convert these into Kelvin. So by turning Celsius into Kelvin, all you have to do is just add 273, or you could be a little bit more exact by just adding 273.15. So we'll say 37 plus 273.15. We get 310.15 Kelvin. 0.1 KK, hold on, hold the phone there. There you go, Three point, yeah, 310.15 Kelvin. And then 30 plus 273.15 is 303. So now this is all settled, 303.15. Can't, can't, can't finish that last part. Okay. So now let's work on here, right? Now, lowercase k values are rate constants. But the thing here is that if you have rate constants, sure, go for it, plug it in. But also you can use this formula for rates as well because they're proportional. If you increase a rate constant, chances are that the rate of the reaction is gonna increase as well. So, it just depends on what values they give you. Now, in this case, the only thing that they told us was that the rate of the reaction increases. So they're talking about literally the rate. So maybe what I can do is I can just um, make this a little bit better 
by saying for this specific example, we're going to be talking about the rate of one reaction. Oh boy. The rate of one over the rate of two. And the ones and the twos, they have to go together with your ones and your twos in your temperature. So this temperature two, the higher temperature, is going with rate number two. And this lower temperature, T1, is going with rate one. Now all that they said was that the rate of the reaction increases 1.47 times from this to this. So which temperature value do you think has the 1.47? Yeah, it's T2 because you're increasing it to that amount. So my rate two is 1.47. But now the thing is, well, what is gonna be rate one, right? Well, whatever number it is, it just has to be times 1.47. So what times 1.47 will get me 1.47? Yeah, you got it. It's just one. Generally, if they're, they do, you know, increases by three times, by four times, by five times, always have your first rate as one, and then that number is whatever it's changing by, two, three, four, five, in this case, 1.47. So they gave you a little hard one there. But we got this. But now we have all the, the variables that we need. Let's solve for activation energy. So... I guess we'll start on this side. Ln of the one divided by 1.47 equals, we have a fraction here, x over 8.314, okay, times by the one over that one temperature minus one over the other temperature. I might need a little bit more room here. Let's see. So the, the, the second one goes first. That's the only crazy part about this equation is that if you go red over blue, it then goes blue and then red. So they kind of flip. That's how I used to remember it when I was learning it in school. So 303.15. Okay. Now, if we got A, I guess we'll do it here because I'm, I'm probably going to need this space. It just breaks my heart that I have to write, you know, on the left side instead of the middle. But you guys know me by now but we got to keep going. So if you have a TI-84 or a TI-89, TI-84 plus CE, which is the calculator on the left side here, you can plug in a couple of these things into the calculator at one shot. The first thing that you can do is, since you know both of your rate values, just plug this all into the calc in one shot. Calc will understand what you're doing. So I'm going to say natural log LN of 1 divided by 1.47. Close that up. And you get negative 0 0.385 equals x over 8.314. And now the next thing that you can do is plug all this into the calci at once. Calci will understand. And it's just going to be one number now. So it's going to be 1 divided by the 310.15 minus 1 divided by... 303. There we go. So now it's just negative 7.445 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now let's clean this up, right? And, and that's what I'm going to go start going on to the right side here. So just know that this is just a numerator and so is this. So I will just simplify this by, by just saying that, Hey, I could, you know, put this on the same, um, playing field on the fraction. So this would be the same as negative 0 0.385 equals negative 7.445 times 10 to the negative fifth x over 8.314. Now we just cross multiply, right? This times this. Whee! We're just getting x by itself. So I'm going to take this value and times it by 8.314. And we get negative 3.203 equals negative 7.445 times 10 to the negative fifth x. Solve for x. 
just divide by this number on both sides. Negative 7.445 times 10 to the negative fifth, negative 7.445 times 10 to the negative fifth. And this is going to cancel. And where am I going to put the answer? Let's see, can I pull this up a little teeny tiny witty bit? Good. And then we get x equals, which is the EA value of, let's see, this number divided by a negative, this number, right? There we go. And we get 4.30 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is in joules. Mainly because the R value, one, you know, one of the R values is in joules. So, since for this uh, equation, you're going to be, you know, pulling them out in joules because of, that e, the, because of the R value, uh, just check back to see um, whether they're asking for in joules specifically or kilojoules. And here they didn't say specifically, they just said what is the activation energy. But just know if you had to go from joules to kilojoules, you just take that number and divide it by 1,000. So either way, it's either 4.3 times 10 to the fourth joules or 43 kilojoules. And that's it. And that's the end for this question. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you for coming here. And I'm really glad that I can help you out on some of your chem needs. Check the channel out. We have tons of videos in chemistry. Got tons of topics for you guys. We basically have a whole chem course. We have a whole physics course. Uh, we got a lot of math topics. So check it out. Um, we'd love to help you guys. And thank you so much for being here. You guys rock. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.